Cheers. Cheers. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> it is a good morning here. It is a great morning. Um, we are at uh, Oak Beach in Long Island, on, out on Long Island, about in the middle, South Shore, and uh, visiting with the beautiful and marvelous and <laughs> and oh. fun to hang out with. Oh, don't don't lay it on too thick. <laughs> Muriel Anderson. But fun to hang out with. That. I yeah, agree was, with that. I, yeah. I, you know, I'm building up to the most important part. Okay, <laughs> I'm starting with the superficial stuff. Yeah, we've had a good time. It, days. Yeah. Um, we have been, uh, this is this is my summer vacation, and it's sort of yours too, I guess, yes. uh, because you're going right back to work in a couple days, yeah. and, or about a week, I guess. Um, I'm not sure if I said it was August 2nd. It's good to date these things, but uh, okay. it's, it's Sunday, beautiful Sunday morning here. The sun is uh, beating down on us, and in a few minutes it'll be unbearable, I'm sure. But... And you've already been for a swim. I've already, yesterday morning by this time, I've been for a bike ride, a swim, uh, let's see, a, a shower, a couple naps, and you probably played your guitar too. And, oh yeah, yes. our first hour, 5.30, I was playing your guitar actually, ah. you know. And uh, and like after that was all done, you guys got up and we had breakfast. <laughs> it was, and my day was done. I mean, I thought I was, I was fried, or not fried, I was like exhilarated, you know. It was, and, uh, and then to top it off, we went out on that boat right there. <clears throat> our, uh, our wonderful host, Brian, took us out uh, out into the Atlantic Ocean. Man, that was too cool. Yeah. So, um, well, and we actually didn't do a whole lot of music. Well, you came out and played a little bit every night, showed us some cool, cool videos, mm -hmm. and uh, and brought out this wonderful instrument in the first place. My, my travel harp guitar. The travel harp guitar. That means it's small enough for you to like carry around and probably put in an overhead bin, right? Goes in the overhead bin. Yeah, Easily. there's no check on this It's thing. much shorter this yeah. way. Yeah, and, and even this is shorter than a, than a regular guitar. Mm -hmm. so. Tell me a little bit about it. Who, who built this or how long have you had it and how did, how did it come about? Yeah, this was <laughs> built by uh, Mike Britton in Florida. Okay. And my normal harp guitar uh, that I'm, I'm used to playing has seven extra basses. And uh, a new one that I have also has a bank of extra trebles, so uh, 20 strings altogether. <laughs> okay. Um, and this one, it only has five extra basses okay. and so it took me a little while to adjust some of my songs so that I would decide which basses I would use. So you can retune them according, retune to, the them according to, the song. to the song. yeah. And uh, But I find it, it works and over time it's mellowed out and I just love the tone of it. Yeah, so the guitars will change uh, yeah. you know, as you play them. I think they uh, and they'll change differently depending on how they're played I believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so right now it sounds like you're in drop D tuning. You yes. D here. Yeah. Although it'll sound to you like an E because with a shorter neck. It's okay. So so tuned it's up you're tuned up uh, yeah. up a whole step in the right, first place. So I, I appreciate that. Otherwise I'd be having shoulder problems. <laughs> so, um, okay. So so then what do you tune these uh, these five to? Like for for whatever you're going to play here. Like, yeah. In general, <laughs> uh, because I have some different harp guitars with different numbers of strings. Mm -hmm. Now some have six, some have seven basses. Uh, I'll I'll put these little marks, uh, just a couple marks of uh, magic marker, really, on this to indicate this is my A string. All right. So oh, that way okay. I know that well, the one with the marks is my A string, okay. uh, regardless of which instrument I'm playing. So so that's what I keep consistent. A to A to me. Just right, that's okay. Yeah, let's, let's, you, right? So this is something we talk about in lessons uh, when, especially if you're using a capo or moving it around, is, is like absolute tuning or absolute key as opposed to relative key. Mm -hmm. So right now we're talking relative, you're in drop D, right? but you're capo to the second fret, which would put you absolutely in E, and students get confused about that all the time, you know. It's like, but if you were going to sit down and play with a piano player and tell them what you're going to do, you got you got to know, to. or they have to know what's, what's going on. Right, you have to transpose up. Yeah, yeah. and then I'll, I'll, I, I normally change, you know, tune it to a scale of some sort. Yeah. So, uh, and I'll start with, with C natural to me. Uh, because I'm in drop D, so that way so I can whole continue step below. going down, yeah. yeah, B, A, G, and then if I'm in D, I, I sometimes like this double O, all the way down, drop, drop D, wow, but some songs uh, I can really use an, an E or an F in them, so mm -hmm. I'll, I'll tune this, uh, so these, these two end up being changed the most, the, the outside ones, right, right, wow. And you even have the ability to change one kind of on the fly here this, yes. with this quick 
a quick tune thing, <laughs> right? Or huh? uh, my several of my other instruments have these half step tuners on right. each, and so. Uh, I asked Mike Doolin, who built my other harp guitars, if he could make uh, make it so that I could change these a half step. So he found these, which come from a folk harp, mm -hmm. and uh, I just put one on this because this is the one that I change the pitch uh, more often right. on, and uh, that makes it uh, easier to change keys uh, yeah. much quicker. Yeah. Well, can you play something? Sure. Well, since I'm, I'm in drop G, okay. I'll, I'll play a, a little bit of a View from Space, and that's one oh, that okay. I teach on, on my video. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. right. <laughs> on some competitors. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's on, on your own, I know. It's on my, uh, my yeah. YouTube site yeah. uh, directly. So this is a View from Space. That's really neat. Thank you. I left out a couple of repeats. Just to, <laughs> it's, it's very meditative. It's yeah. Really kind of, yeah. Kind of to down, so. um, it's it's uh, really amazing how you can keep the keep the background going with the harmonics. I mean, it sounds like sometimes three different parts going on there. You know, and that's the, obviously one of the cool things you can do with the guitar is is create the uh, the and that would make a great piece. 
for multiple instruments as well, too. You know, you could have strings playing that melody and all kinds of other things. Yeah, it'd be fun to, to play with it. I recorded it with two harp guitars, mm -hmm. actually, uh, the original version. Uh, it was for two parts. Uh, so I recorded it with John Doan. Okay. And uh, that's the harp guitars under the stars CD. But then um, I don't always have another instrument <laughs> around to play with. And so uh, that was just from necessity, I said, well, I wanted to play it, but I wanted to grab that melody that John was playing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I figured out, well, I guess I can, can work that in. So I just do a little light rest stroke in it. Right. And I find that I can um, play that melody note and do this harmonic at the same time uh -huh. when, when, when the two fall on the same yeah. beat. So I'm touching at the 12th fret and plucking behind with my thumb. Right. You know, and I, sh I show the technique, you know, just on my YouTube site. But maybe I'll, sometime I'll do a, a whole lesson and show the whole song. There you. you go. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because in that one, you know, obviously there's a couple different ways, lots of different ways you can do harmonics. But in that one, you're usually mm -hmm. using your index finger to stop the string or be the the node, and, right. and sometimes using your thumb to play it, and sometimes using your ring finger. Well, on, on, where this you are, one, right? on this one, actually, the ring finger is only playing open strings, but they're played lightly in between. Oh, okay, right. And so it sounds like I'm playing more harmonics than I actually Got it. am. Right. So it's a little. A little okay, so all the there. harmonics in that one were played with your thumb. All the harmonics were played with my thumb. Right, but the open strings. And yeah, right. and then I used these two fingers to play these open strings, and then, and so, and sometimes I'll reverse the order. Right. Of the open strings played with the fingers, or yeah. you know, or they could not necessarily open strings if I'm fretting a, uh, a chord, but just regular notes. And of course, with the uh, the sequence of notes that you have in that, sometimes there are notes, consecutive notes in the scale that you're playing, three of them giving that whole harp effect right. that is is used, you know, commonly on the guitar by playing notes that are uh, not sequential in the, the order of the strings. You know, sometimes a higher note will be played on a lower string and be really confusing when students, you know, when people start working on it, it's like, I, wait, I'm going to a higher note, but I got to go to a lower string. It's like, you know, it's um, interesting too. The, or the, the piece that comes to my mind as you play that with a very similar background was Cavatina, oh, because yeah. um, when John Williams, you know, was first used in, a, uh, I mean, it was John Williams that kind of suggested to Stanley uh, Myers that it would make a great guitar piece, and John originally recorded it with two guitars. You know, pl playing the background on one and the and the melody oh, right. later, and uh, but then he had to play it out live and had to rearrange it to make sure that they could you know squeeze all the back the arpeggios yeah. and the and the notes in it. A number of my pieces came about that way. I wrote it for two parts mm -hmm. and then wanted to play it myself, and so figured out how to intertwine the parts. And so it's it's an interesting technique actually. It just out, it comes about out out of necessity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to compose. Yeah, yeah, wow. Well, um, tell me a little bit about what you're going to be doing the next next couple of weeks. Um, you've got a, I, we went over your schedule a little bit. So it took a long time <laughs> to tell me what time. you were going to be doing in the next two or three weeks. To go through where but I'm Some going. of it includes trips, a trip to Northern California, and so uh, we definitely want to encourage people, anybody that's close to me in, or in, uh, in Northern California, and, but even further. I mean, all up and down California, really. Right. I'm uh, doing three guitar workshops right. coming up. And so uh, from Vancouver and Northern California. And uh, also, I'll do a little private teaching in Illinois when I stop there. Visit the family, maybe? Visit the family. Yeah. And I'll take some private lessons while I'm there. Good. Uh, and uh, Minneapolis first, then Chicago, uh, Vancouver, Northern California. A couple things in Southern California. And uh, I'll be trying out some new tunes. So I've, I've had a chance to write a little bit. Uh, that's the nice thing about being here, having a little time. Yeah. To stretch out and come up with some new ideas. And yeah. So I've got a bunch of new tunes I'll, I'll be debuting on this, this tour. You want to give us a sneak preview of a piece of one? OK, I'll give you a sneak preview. You don't have to do the whole thing. You don't oh, want okay. to give it away. But, <laughs> But you know, let me do the the, the ragtime tune. Oh. That, that would work better on this instrument. The okay. Spanish one, it just like really needs a Spanish guitar. And needs a lower pitch, yeah, probably needs too. Yeah, a lower huh? pitch. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs>
That's just a little synopsis. It's a longer piece. Yeah. Yeah, that's the feel of it. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you were sort of envisioning what when you uh, put that together? Well, I came across story? Yeah, I came across some old uh, family videos. Uh, now, be careful films. how far you go into this, you know, and yes. who, who might be uh, implicated and indicted. <laughs> right. Um, but as much as you're comfortable telling us about this, it would be great. Sure, yeah. Uh, it was funny. Uh, it was during the Prohibition when my grandfather got the, one of the first home film cameras and uh, took a picture of the whole family going to Canada during Prohibition and having a great time. And they, had, they, they took pictures of the Goodyear blimp and mm -hmm. so uh, by riding a biplane um, and uh, going in and out of bars, which they couldn't do right. in America at the time. So, so was, they didn't have the same laws happening there. And really? so there were a lot of people making weekend trips across the border or yeah. just an evening trip or something. Yeah. So it was such a funny video just watching all these uh, really historic footage yeah. captured, you know, in this. Yeah, this it looked like bit. the Bonnie and Clyde type stuff or yeah, something. Yeah, so uh, I wrote that to kind of go along with it. Yeah. Oh, and it's called what again? A fine pickle. So we hadn't mentioned that. Yes. <laughs> a fine pickle. So yep. that is really neat. Um, the dates, we should go over a couple of the specific dates that you're doing, um, yep. because you're doing a, at least at least in my neck of the woods, um, sun, Saturday, August 15th, right? Mm -hmm. Workshop at Keith Holland's. Yeah. And the house concerts that you're doing around there, is there info about those like on your website if anybody wants to know more about going? or? Yeah, there's uh, contact info, that, uh, I think uh, an email or something on there. Or, okay. or they can just uh, email me directly, uh, concert at murielanderson.com. Okay. And get info about, get info uh, about things, yeah. getting invited to some of those, or or, or at least making reservations. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I think most people probably know what we're talking about with house concerts, but it's you know a small thing. There might be anywhere from ten to fifty people squeezed into somebody's living room, um, and uh, some friends of mine have, have done a few of those too. And I, yeah. next time you're we. I sh we should be in touch sooner next time you're out there because I've got a couple other people now that could set up stuff like that. Yeah, I, I really enjoy doing that on tour. It's it's uh, comfortable and there's more interaction uh, between the audience. Yeah. So it's it's a, a fun way to, uh, especially to do something on weekdays in between the, the regular concerts. Right, right. Yeah, and uh, next fall I'll be um, bringing out a, a new concept too, the audiovisual show. So I'll, I'll be back your way in January also. Okay. Uh, yep. Good. And uh, I'll have the audio visual show up there. That's what we could, yeah, we'll tell them more about that later. Yeah. Keep, let them keep guessing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other main public one is uh, Don Quixote's in yes. Felton, and that's on when? Do you know off the top of your head? It was like Wednesday, the Wednesday following that Saturday, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we can so. figure it out. Brian, do the math for us. No, yeah. <laughs> it's like the Wednesday after August 15th. Right. Okay. Oh, and something in Livermore. Livermore, on California. On Sunday. Yes, yes uh, benefit for the Rotary Club. Okay. So anybody in that neck of the woods could get info about that and show up too, right? Yep. So hopefully one or two of the 12 people that are going to see this will come to one of those. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. So. Great.